Hello dear friends, I am Professor M. Masum Raza from Department of Library Information Science, AMU, Aligarh. So, we have already covered two lectures on the management of libraries and information centers. In the very first lecture, we have discussed the concept and in the second lecture, I have already discussed the principles and we will continue with the library management principles in the third lecture also. So, we will discuss basically, uh, we have two major principles, the classical management theory is there and we have new classical management theory. So, under the classical management theory, we will discuss the scientific management approach, which will cover systematic analysis, time and motion studies, standardization, training and development and incentive systems. So, let us try to understand first what is classical management theory. The classical management theory originating in the late 19th and early 20th century represents a collective set of ideas that profoundly shaped the understanding and practices of organizational management. This school of thought is commonly known as traditional school of management among professionals and evolved as a response to the transformative effect of the industrial revolution. This pivotal period marked a departure from the traditional handicraft system giving rise to larger and more complex organizations. The industrial revolution brought about significant changes including the rise of large scale enterprises and the need for systematic approaches to management. In response to these challenges, the classical management theory emerged providing a structured framework for organizing and overseeing these burgeoning organizations. This theory is characterized by three main branches that is scientific management, administrative principles and bureaucratic organization. We will discuss it one by one. First is scientific management approach. The term scientific management was coined by Laus Brandes in 1910. Frederick Winslow Taylor is considered to be the father of scientific management. Scientific management involves applying scientific principles and methods to management practices. This includes using systematic and analytical approaches to optimize processes, tasks and objectives within an organization. By studying work processes scientifically, managers can identify the most efficient ways to perform tasks, improve productivity and enhance overall organizational performance. This approach often involves systematic analysis, which means breaking down complex tasks into smaller components for analysis. Second important thing here is time and motion studies, which includes observing and measuring the time it takes for workers to complete tasks and identifying ways to streamline processes. Third important element is standardization. Establishing standardized procedures and best practices to ensure consistency and efficiency in operations. Next is training and development, which includes providing training to workers to ensure they have the necessary skills and knowledge to perform their task effectively. And the last is incentive systems, which means implementing reward systems to motivate employees to increase productivity and achieve organizational goals. So basically, what are these scientific management principles? Let us try to understand like this. These principles of scientific management developed by Frederick Winslow Taylor revolutionized the way organizations approached work and productivity. Taylor's principles aimed to optimize efficiency 
and productivity in industrial settings through scientific methods. By applying these principles, organizations can achieve greater efficiency, reduce waste and improve overall performance. And it includes basic five elements. What are these five elements of this scientific management? We will take up one by one. First is science not rule of thumb. Tiller advocates for replacing reliance on estimation, often guided by a rule of thumb, with a more precise and scientific approach to work. Every detail should be accurately measured rather than approximated. This precision should extend across all aspects of management. Second element is cooperation, not individualism. Taylor's scientific management encourages cooperation over individualistic chaos. It envisions a workplace built on mutual confidence, cooperation and goodwill between the management and workers. Third element is harmony, not discord. The principles of group harmony emphasizes the need for mutual cooperation and understanding within a group. This approach seeks to create an environment where each member contributes optimally to the collective goals. The next element is maximum output. The focus is on continuous improvement in production and productivity. Rather than limiting production, whether imposed by management or workers, the aim is to maximize profit through increased output. And the last of all this is the development of each person to his or her greatest efficiency, which means in the realm of scientific management, Taylor emphasized developing every worker to the fullest potential. This involves scientifically selecting workers, providing them with proper training and regularly updating their skills to align with evolving work methods. The idea is to ensure the prosperity of both the individual worker and the organization as a whole. Second important component is administrative management. The administrative management is basically a school of thought that places a significant emphasis on the role of managers and the functions of management within an organization. This was developed by Henry Fiol, a French management theorist. This perspective seeks to provide a comprehensive understanding of the management process and the philosophy that underlines effective administration. He presented his principles in his book Administration in Gestale at Generale, which was published in French in 1960. The English translation of this work title General and Industrial Management became available later. So, we will see what were the general principles of management. So, here again, we know that these 14 principles of Henry Fiol, they had been very important throughout the administrative process. And uh, this French management theorist, he proposed those 14 principles of management that are considered foundational in the field of management. These principles are often used as a framework for guiding organizational behavior and decision making. So, what are those 14 principles? We will take up one by one. Number one, division of work. The division of work involves assigning each employee a task that they can become proficient at. This approach aims to increase productivity as employees become more skilled, more confident and efficient in their specialized tasks. It contrasts with the practice of multitasking, which is discouraged by experts for its potential negative impact on efficiency. 
Then second most important principle is authority and responsibility. Authority signifying the right to issue orders and enforce compliance must align with responsibility. The obligation to perform assigned task for effective management. Third is discipline. Organizational rules and agreements should be obeyed and respected by employees. Discipline ensures smooth operations and prevent chaos within the organization. Then the next is unity of command. A unity of command emphasizes that each employee should receive orders from only one supervisor to prevent confusion and conflict. This principle ensures a clear and unambiguous chain of command within the organization. Next is unity of direction. Activities related to a specific objectives should be guided by a unified plan, ensuring proper coordination and a concerted effort towards common goals. Next is subordination of individual interest to the general interest. Collective organizational goals take precedence over individual preference, ensuring that individual interest do not overshadow the broader objective. Next is remuneration. Employees should receive fair compensation encompassing salaries, bonuses and other financial and non-financial rewards for their work. The next is centralization. The degree of centralization or concentration of decision-making authority should be tailored to the nature and size of the organization. Finding a perfect balance between the centralization and decentralization. Next is scalar chain, which represents the hierarchical structure of authority. The scalar chain emphasizes a formal chain of command for communication, ensuring smooth information flow from top to bottom and vice versa. The next is order. This is to maximize efficiency, materials and people should be appropriately placed at the right time, contributing to a well-organized workplace. The next principle is equity. Managers should treat employees with kindness and justice, emphasizing fair treatment and equal opportunities for all. The next is stability of tenure of personal or staff, which means encouraging stability in personal or staff tenure that fosters a stable work environment and contributes to a positive organizational culture by mitigating disruptions caused by frequent turnover. The next important principle is initiative. Employees should be motivated to take initiatives and contribute creatively to organizational goals promoting innovation and motivation. And the last of all these general principles that's very important that is Esprit de Corps and which focuses on cultivating a sense of unity and team spirit among employees which is crucial as a positive workplace culture enhances cooperation and teamwork. And the next is bureaucratic management. This concept was given by Max Weber. Max Weber, a German sociologist, dedicated his studies to organizational activities and contributed significantly to the understanding of authority structures and relations within organizations. Weber introduced a theoretical concept known as bureaucracy, which represents an idealized form of organization. This bureaucratic structure is defined by several key features, including a division of labor, a well-defined hierarchy, detailed rules and regulations, and relationships characterized by impersonality. Weber acknowledged that the ideal bureaucracy 
he conceptualized was not a reflection of reality. Rather, he intended it as a conceptual framework for theorizing about work and envisioning how work could be organized efficiently within large groups. The ideal type of bureaucracy served as a model to analyze and understand organizational behavior, providing a basis for discussion on organizational efficiency, structure, and the complexities of managing work in large scale settings. So, what are the basic features of bureaucratic management that you can uh, see here? The division of labor, hierarchy of authority, specialization of tasks, rules and regulation, impersonality, and career orientation. These are the features of bureaucratic management. We will take up one by one. Division of labor is basically work is to be divided into specialized tasks, each performed by individuals with specific skills. This specialization enhances efficiency and expertise. And the next is hierarchy of authority. The bureaucracies have a clearly defined hierarchy with various levels of authority. Each level has a designated role and individuals at higher levels have authority over those below. Third important feature is specialization of tasks. So, employees are assigned specific tasks based on their skills and expertise. Specialization helps in achieving efficiency and effectiveness in the execution of duties. And the next important feature is rules and regulations. In bureaucratic organizations, formal rules and regulations are systematically developed and documented to ensure consistency, fairness, efficiency, control and legal compliance. These rules provide clear guidelines for decision making, standardized practice, promote fairness, streamline processes, enable organizational control and ensure adherence to legal requirements. Overall, they serve as a framework for maintaining order and effectiveness within the organization. And the next important uh, feature is impersonality. Bureaucratic organizations emphasize impartiality and objectivity in decision making. Personal feelings and relationships should not influence professional interaction. And the last important feature is career orientation. Employment and promotions are based on merit and competence. So, bureaucracies aims to attract and retain qualified individuals who contribute to the organizational goals. Thank you, dear friends. So, tomorrow we will be discussing neoclassical approach. In the next lecture, we will focus on the neoclassical approach of management. Thank you very much.